superior performance compared with a conventional jet, in this case an MD-80, the latest version of the McDonnell Douglas DC-9. On takeoff, the conventional jet rotates or becomes airborne at 169 miles per hour. The Bernelli, in contrast, is able to lift off at only 99 miles per hour and uses 40% less runway. By the time the conventional jet has rotated and it climbed to 1,821 feet, the Bernelli type is already at 3,698 or 1,877 feet higher, four miles from takeoff point. Once both aircraft have climbed to a cruise altitude of 35,000 feet, both are capable of modern cruise speeds. On landing, the conventional aircraft touches down on the runway at 149 miles per hour. The Bernelli's landing speed is less, only 92 miles per hour, and again, uses less runway. Both aircraft have traveled 1,000 miles, both at modern cruise speeds, where the Bernelli has carried twice the payload with the same amount of fuel. Williams and Cantilli suggest the Bernelli design could revolutionize aircraft safety. It shows the low and removes all the inadequacies of the current conventional airplane in that it provides the strong fuselage surrounding the customers. It uh, provides for uh, enough lift to reduce the landing and takeoff speed, which is the most dangerous portion of the trip. But the Bernoulli fuselage is not a new design innovation. The first lifting body patents were awarded to Vincent Bernoulli, a Texan, in the early 1920s. In 1921, Bernoulli's RB-1, the first lifting body aircraft, carried 32 passengers. By 1924, he had built the world's largest air freighter. It carried two Essex automobiles. In 1927, the CB-16 was the first twin-engine airplane able to fly on one engine of designed gross weight. In 1941, the British built a version of the UB-14 called the Clyde Clipper, and it was used by General Charles de Gaulle as his personal plane in World War II. Some of aviation's most respected pioneers flew Bernelli's. Here, General Jimmy Doolittle is pictured in a Bernelli GX-3. By 1939, as the United States was anticipating the need to arm for World War II, Bernelli Designs had won U.S. government design competitions by outperforming all others. General Hap Arnold, Chief of Staff of the U.S. Army Air Corps, wrote in a report that stated, In my opinion, it is essential, in the interest of national defense, that this Bernelli procurement be authorized. These successes and recognition put Bernelli in the forefront of aircraft designers almost 50 years ago. Yet no aircraft of his design are flying today. Why not? Dallas Swan is the nephew of Vincent Bernelli and a staunch critic of current aircraft design. He is a vice president of the Bernelli Company, Incorporated, which is located in Miami, Florida. My uncle Vincent Bernelli, uh, I, I remember him very well growing up as a, as a kid because it, in the early 30s, well, all during the 30s, he, uh, he had a aircraft factory in Keyport, New Jersey, uh, and we were very close as a family. My mother was Bernelli's youngest sister. Uh, in 1940, General Hap Arnold, who was chief of the Army Air Corps, uh, requested the War Department to build 30 bombers of the Bernelli design. Uh, this was a great breakthrough as far as Bernoulli was concerned, and uh, President Roosevelt had uh, asked Bernoulli and his associates to come to the Oval Office for a little uh, signing ceremony where Roosevelt was going to ink the directive uh, uh, authorizing the construction of these bombers. Harry Hopkins was there, my uncle, uh, and several of my uncle's associates. During the course of the uh, time that uh, they were there, uh, President Roosevelt asked my uncle who his financial backer was to, you know, who was going to finance the, the, the construction of these airplanes. And my uncle mentioned Arthur Pugh. Uh, Arthur Pugh at that time was the chairman of the board of the Sun Oil uh, Company and a staunch financial packer of Wendell Wilkie, who of course was running against Roosevelt uh, at that time. Uh, with Bernelli saying that, 
Roosevelt, under a ration faced, took the pen he had in his hand to sign the directive, threw it across the room in a rage, and asked uh, Hopkins to escort my uncle and his associates out of the Oval Office. Uh, that was the beginning of the end, uh, politically, for Brunelli. Arthur Pugh was a major financial backer of Wendell Wilkie, one of FDR's main political opponents. Even though Brunelli's planes were not ordered by the government, he continued to design aircraft. His patent drawings include supersonic designs used by modern jets. Since the death of Vincent Brunelli in 1964, Chalmers Goodland has been struggling for acceptance of the lifting body design. Nicknamed Slick by his fellow pilots, Goodland was the first test pilot for the famed Bell X-1 rocket-powered aircraft, which broke the sound barrier. Goodland piloted the initial 26 test flights. Later, Captain Chuck Yeager and others followed in his footsteps. Goodland has over 40 years of experience in the cockpit, and he flight tested Brunelli's last plane. He is a member of the Niagara Frontier Aviation Hall of Fame, and is mentioned in the best-selling novel, The Right Stuff, as the best of the breed. I was Brunelli's test pilot, and um, but I, but Brunelli gave me the opportunity of testing the airplane for East African Airways, who I was trying to interest in placing an order for them. Most airplane I've ever flown. Beautiful stability, you, it gives you the feeling of riding in a normal car, and uh, but it has the comfort of a Cadillac. Without the promise of government contract, says Goodlin, aircraft manufacturers are reluctant to invest in new designs. I think the bean counters probably say, uh, listen, we can continue using this tooling we've already bought and paid for uh, for many years to come if we have no competition. And uh, that makes good commercial sense with one exception. There's criminal negligence involved because people are being killed in these airplanes. It has become a subject of, of, of policy for the military industrial complex to ignore this design and so we continue to build airplanes which are neither safe nor economical. After flying the Bernalli plane, I embarked on a very stressful campaign to get to the bottom of the obvious problem. I learned that virtually every condemnation of the Bernalli planes quoted a 1941 report from the Board of Review. But when I had attempted to obtain a copy of this report from the Pentagon, I was promptly told it was classified. The report remained classified until the Freedom of Information Act allowed Goodlin access to the classified records. The report bore the signature of General Betty Myers, who was later jailed for aircraft procurement fraud. The report's obvious intent was established by its concluding recommendations, which were that the Bernelli designs were not to be considered for military use ever again. In the early 1970s, Boeing studied a containerized freighter, the Boeing 754. This design is remarkably similar to a design patented by Vincent Brunelli in 1964. Boeing's own data proves the superiority of the Brunelli approach. With similar power, Boeing's figures show that the twin-engine Brunelli type B754 had a maximum containerized payload of 160,000 pounds while the B-767 could only carry less than half, 72,770 pounds, non-containerized. In short, the Brunelli type could carry more than double the payload and fly 1,200 nautical miles further than the B-767. The 767 was constructed instead of the 754. On a test landing without thrust reversers, the brakes overheat. The Bernelli design, in comparison, would land at much lower speeds, eliminating the need for excessive braking and reducing fire potential. If the Boeing 754 is so superior, why was it never built? When Boeing was made aware of the similarities between the 754 and existing Bernelli patents, the project was suddenly terminated. When asked if its vice president of engineering would like to debate the merits of the conventional designs as opposed to the Bernelli designs, Boeing responded through its attorneys, but Boeing was specifically uninterested in participating in or commenting on this subject. 